Naila, why is English language important to learn? This is because English language is an international language and is widely followed and understood by people across the world. I want to learn this language. To learn every language, there are some skills to develop. Follow this class to learn these skills. You are welcome to our program, A Simplified Guide to English Language. This is a program that presents to you the various aspects of the English language in a very simple manner. A program that discusses topics in grammar, comprehension, literature, essay writing, and oral as English language as well. It is a program that has the aim of bringing English language to those of us in school, writing both internal and external examinations, either at the basic school level or at the secondary school level. A program that will be of immense benefit to those of us trying to learn and understand the English language. We have been having discussions on the relationship between clauses. We have discussions so far on the compound sentence, the complex sentence, on coordination and subordination. Today's lesson is going to concentrate on a review of what we have discussed so far. Join us with your pen and exercise book throughout the lesson. We are going to put all that we have learned in our previous lessons by way of reviewing in a form of exercise that together we shall discuss. Let's go into the lesson. Mental reflection. Identify all the sentences in the passage below. That's question one. A passage is going to be displayed. And in that passage, we are required to identify all the sentences. Remember, at the beginning of this lesson, relationship between clauses, we did discuss what a sentence is. We mentioned that in the orthographical manner, that's in written form by a piece of material that is written down, a sentence can be identified by a statement that begins with a capital letter and ends with either a full stop, an exclamation, or a question mark. So when you see a statement that begins with a capital letter and ends with any of the three punctuation marks that we've mentioned, a full stop, an exclamation mark, or a question mark, in the written way of analyzing what a sentence is, we say this is a sentence. So we are going to apply this principle to what we are going to see in the passage. We also do mention that a sentence can also be looked at as a way of rules of grammar and therefore a statement that gives a complete idea, that gives a complete meaning of expression is a sentence. So we therefore said that the highest unit of grammatical rule or the highest unit of expression in grammar is the sentence. So a sentence could be in simple form, that simple sentence made of only one clause. A sentence could be made of two or more clauses. And this led us to other forms of sentences. Where we looked at compound sentence, 
end complex sentence. So we are going to identify all the sentences in the passage below by applying this knowledge we've learned on the paragraph in our first question. The second question says classify the sentence as a simple, that is one independent clause. Simple sentence is one independent clause. So as we read the passage, we'll be required to identify whether the sentence we have identified is a simple sentence. B, the sentence you will be identifying or the sentence you would identify in the passage is it a compound sentence? You should be able to classify it as a compound sentence, if it is. And then three, you should also be able to identify the sentence that you, you should also be able to classify the sentence that you have identified as to whether it is a complex sentence. So these two questions are going to be the center of our review lesson as we go through the passage. So we will be able, we should be able to identify all the sentences in the passage. After that, we should classify the sentence we've identified as whether it is a simple sentence, a compound sentence, or a complex sentence. Now let's go into the passage. First of all, we shall read the passage, the entire passage, then we go back to begin to identify the sentences and classify them as well. You read with me? Haven't you another interesting story, Fuseni? Grandfather Kanga asked in a hoarse whisper, If you have, tell it. Tell it quickly. At the urgent prompting of the counselors, Fuseni launched into another story. Many harvests after the young man of the sack of salt had become king in the country of the wise in reward for his great wisdom, a calamity overtook his kingdom. The great tree under which the king held court was struck by lightning in broad daylight and burnt almost to ashes. The king and all his people went into mourning, throwing ashes on their heads and abstaining from shaka for many days. Five moons after the council tree had been struck dead by lightning, the people woke up one morning to see a strange sight. The dead council tree was covered from its base to its utmost Hair vows with mushrooms, white and tasty mushrooms that were greatly valued as a delicacy in the country of the wise. Oh, my counselors, said the king, what we once thought was a calamity was after all a blessing. We should show you that even the wisest men still have something new to learn before they die. Our council tree is dead. But if the tree had not died, how could we have all these delicious mushrooms now growing on it? Straight away, the king commanded that the people should prepare for a great feast. The women were ordered to put great pots on the fire and to hold themselves ready to cook mushroom soup for the king and all his wise men. Then, one wise man, who was acclaimed by all the people as one of the wisest men in the land because he nearly won a contest of the wise more than a generation back, came forward and posed this weighty question. Oh, our king, shall we get all the mushrooms safely to the ground without damaging them? The king and all his men pondered this question for a long time. After scratching his head till the flesh turned almost raw, one wise man advised that the best climber in the kingdom be brought to climb the tree 
unplug all the mushrooms, placing them gently in a sack snug at his back. But this advice was rejected on the grounds that if the climber should fall, all the mushrooms in the sack would be crushed. Another very wise man suggested plucking the precious mushroom with a long pole in the manner that children pluck fruits. This suggestion also found no favor, as the mushrooms would get damaged in their fall to the ground. Then the king himself, who was king for the very reason that he was the wisest man in the land, held his hand up for silence and spoke to his subjects thus, Men of the country of wise, wisdom is a strange thing and does not necessarily reside under the whitest hair. The solution to our problem is simple. Let us cut down the tree at its base, bring forth all the strong men in the land and let them stand ready to catch the bow off the tree as it falls. In this way, not a single mushroom will get damaged. Now, having finished reading the passage, let's now identify the sentences first of all, and then we identify the sentence as to whether they are simple, compound, or complex. So we go to the first paragraph, and then we try to identify the sentences. First paragraph. Haven't you another interesting story, Fuseni? Grandfather Kanga asked in a wise whisper, If you have, tell it. Tell it quickly. Yes. But the definition of what is a sentence? Identify the sentences in this paragraph. I guess you have the following as sentences. Haven't you another interesting story, Fuseni? That's a sentence. We are saying it is a sentence because it qualifies the criteria identified under orthography that is in written form, what a sentence is. A statement that begins with a capital letter and ends in either a question mark, an exclamation mark, or a full stop. And this does that. Again, a statement that gives a complete meaning and it qualifies. Therefore, haven't you another interesting story? Fuseni is a sentence. Grandfather Kanga asked in a hoarse whisper. Another sentence. If you have, tell it. Another sentence. Tell it quickly. Another sentence. So that paragraph has those as sentences. Now let's identify, classify these sentences as whether they are simple sentences, compound sentences, or complex sentences. A simple sentence is made of only one clause, and a clause is having a subject-verb relationship, simple subject-verb relationship. So let's see in the first sentence, how many clauses do we have there? If we have only one clause, then it is a simple sentence. If we have more than one clause, then it's either a compound sentence or a complex sentence, depending on the kind of clauses that are there. So in the first sentence, we have just one clause. That is the subject being you. The you here referring to who? Fuseni. And our verb is haven't. So we have it just one independent clause. So it's a simple sentence. Haven't you another interesting story? Fuseni? That's a simple sentence. One independent clause. Then the next sentence, Grandfather Kanka. Kanga asked in a hoarse whisper. 
It's also made of only one clause, one independent clause. Grandfather being the subject, grandfather kanga being the subject, ask being our verb. So subject verb relationship there. In a horse whisper is something else altogether that we have learned in our previous lessons. If you have missed those ones, kindly go to the channel, the link below on your screen to study those lessons. So here, grandfather can ask in a horse whisper is an independent clause, one clause, and therefore is a simple sentence. If you have, tell it. That's a sentence. Because it qualifies under the criteria of a statement beginning in a capital and ending either in an exclamation mark or a question mark or a full stop. This one ends in an exclamation mark. Yes. It's a command. And therefore, it's a simple sentence. If you have, tell it. Tell it quickly. One simple independent clause. Tell it quickly. So here, we have a subject that is implied, and we know who the subject is. That's Fuseni. So instead of we having Fuseni, tell it quickly because it's a string of flow of idea. That Fuseni is missing. It's an implied subject that we all do know. So here, the subject that is Fuseni, tell is our verb. So we have subject verb relationship there. And therefore, it is a simple sentence. It's a simple sentence because it's just made of one independent clause. So, so far, the entire paragraph is made of only simple sentences. That tells us that we can write a paragraph linking our ideas of one sentence to the other in just simple sentence using simple sentences that's what i mean your entire paragraph can be made of just simple sentences and that's perfectly what we have there now let's go to the next paragraph this should be the entire paragraph because the next one is a quotation so let's read it and try to identify the sentence at the urgent prompting of the counselors, Fuseni launched into another story. And what is the story? Fuseni is beginning the story. Quoted. Many harvests after the young man of the sack of salt had become king in the country of the wise. In reward for his great wisdom, a calamity overtook his kingdom. That's a sentence there. Now let's analyze this sentence and find out how many clauses we have in there. And then find out whether... This sentence is a simple sentence, a compound sentence, or a complex sentence. Remember, a simple sentence should have only one independent clause. A compound sentence should have two independent clauses. And a complex sentence has one or more independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. A complex sentence having one or more independent clauses linked together with one or more dependent clauses. So having this, let's subject this sentence to as whether it is a compound sentence, simple sentence, or a complex sentence. Now, the clauses we have here include young man of the sack of salt had become king. I just left many harvests after the young man. So that's a clause there. Then another clause. Calamity overtook his kingdom. That's also another clause there. So let's see, that these two clauses, do they make sense? A calamity overtook his kingdom. It makes sense. Young man of the sack of salt had become king in the country of the wise 
in the world for his great wisdom. All those are additional information. But of course, the young man of the sack of salt had become king. Does it make sense? Had become king in the country of the wise. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. So we have two independent clauses there. Therefore, that becomes a compound sentence. And then we have the great tree under which the king held court was struck by lightning in broad daylight and bent almost to ashes. Another sentence. Let's identify whether we have more than one clause there. And if we do, or if we don't, what type of sentence is that? So the first clause, let's identify the subject in the, let's identify, let's identify the clause. The clause is the great tree under which the king held court. was struck by lightning in broad daylight. So the great tree under which the king held court was struck by lightning in broad daylight. One clause. Here the subject there is the most important subject is the king held court. Where under a particular tree, a which tree, that is the tree that got struck by lightning. So we have a clause there. Then the next clause is bent almost to ashes. What bent? The tree bent almost to ashes. The repetition of the same tree is not necessary there. So it is absent. But the next clause is bent almost to ashes. This also makes sense. So the great tree under which the king held court was struck by lightning. It makes sense. At what time? In broad daylight. It makes sense. Then we have the tree bent almost ashes also making sense. So two independent clauses. And when we have two independent clauses linked together, we say it is a what? A compound sentence. And then the last sentence in that paragraph. The king and all his people went into mourning, throwing ashes on their heads and abstaining from shaka for many days. How many clauses do we have there? The king and all his people is a subject. Went into mourning. Went the verb for that. And then we have abstaining from shaka for many days. Who? We do not need to repeat the subject verb because the subject is the same who abstained from Shaka for many days. The very subject that went into mourning. So there was no need for the repetition of the king and all his people abstain from Shaka for many days. There is no need for that repetition. Therefore, we have the clause beginning with abstaining from Shaka for many days. And that makes sense. Who? The king and his people abstain from Shaka for many days. And that also makes sense. So we have two independent clauses brought together, of course, by what a coordinator end. And when you have two independent clauses brought together by a coordinator, we say this word is a compound sentence. So that statement is a compound sent sentence. We've realized so far in this paragraph two, we have compound sentences. This is where time will permit us to be with you, hoping to meet you next time on the same channel MTA Africa for the same program a simplified guide to the English language until then we say bye bye